While support characters provide the highest healing potential out of any other class in the game, they can also take matters into their own hands with their damage, so let's get right into it. We've talked about it before within the various guides that this channel has to offer. Damage is healing. While this concept was touched upon within the said guides, I feel as though a more thorough explanation for this concept could help players apply this concept with ease. In short, there are times where you can kill targets before they kill your teammates when healing wouldn't be enough. However, there are many different situations that could warrant the use of damage over healing. So let's lay down the basic roadmap for this video to stay organized. Throughout the video, I will not only explain the concept of damage is healing thoroughly, but also how it influences each support character in alphabetical order. I will also then explain how this concept has influenced the metas Overwatch has manifested over time. Timestamps for each concept will be found in the description. But without further ado, let's get right into it. Throughout every game of Overwatch, there are many different fights that occur that create unique combat experiences. Throughout the sea of options offered to a support every fight, there are some scenarios that require aggressive decisions to win the fight with ease. Newer support players especially tend to fall into the trap of focusing down healing targets when they could do damage to retroactively heal instead. For example, if there is a high charge Zarya beaming down your critical Reinhardt with no shield, while you may not be able to outheal the damage, you can diminish the damage source by killing the enemy Zarya, which prevents the otherwise avoidable death for your friendly Reinhardt. Thus, damage is healing and should be used to every support's advantage. While this is a very basic example, there are many more character specific concepts that are directly influenced by the idea of damage is healing, which we will go into shortly. Before we discuss each support and their offensive utility, I want to highlight the fact that this is not a one shoe fits all concept and every situation is different. While that may seem overwhelming to think about at first, you'll come to realize that you will notice when opportunities present themselves quicker than if you had not known about the concept previously before. With that out of the way, let's delve into our first support, Ana. With Ana, there is one ability that nearly defines the idea that damage is healing. This ability is the Biotic Grenade. Many players, especially at lower ranks, misuse this ability often. A common mistake is to look for value through healing with the grenade far too often instead of using the grenade offensively for splashing anti-effects. Many players fall into the trap of using the grenade for healing 90% of the time and damage for the remaining 10%. It should arguably be the opposite though. Even if your team is critical, splashing the entire enemy team with an anti-nade will force them to kite back or continue pushing into your team with a considerable disadvantage. This is incredibly apparent when the enemy is re-engaging with a transcendence. Splashing the enemy with a sea of purple will force them to slow down and rethink the push, and if they don't do such, they will suffer serious consequences. While finding purples is fundamental to Ana's carry potential, using the grenade for its healing potential is still something you don't want to pass up on. For example, if your team is critical and you notice the enemy Winston engaging with a jump, splashing a grenade on your team can change a gold mine to a hellhole for the enemy Winston in just a fraction of a second. So, while finding healing through damage is important, you have to understand the basics first to really grasp the concept on not only Ana, but all of the other supports as well. Now that we have discussed Ana, let's understand how Baptiste exemplifies this concept. While Baptiste does not have any abilities that directly transfer over to the concept that damage is healing, his primary weapon most certainly packs a punch. Avoiding premature uses of the immortality field is fundamental to finding success on the character. While there are many aspects that go into finding the perfect lamp like pondering threat levels and whether or not you can heal the target, there is one more topic that is often tucked under the rug. What if you can't heal the target that is in serious danger, but you can kill the danger source instead? 72 damage a burst is considerable damage that should not be overlooked, especially if headshot multipliers are added into the mix. While subpar immortality fields would be prevented using this concept, resource management would also be positively impacted by this change of playstyle as well. By focusing down damage, you are not consuming healing resources, meaning you can take a much longer fight after the target is eliminated. Much like Baptiste, Brigitte is a character that doesn't directly have an ability that translates to the idea that damage is healing. However, her primary damage is directly correlated to her healing, which is something to note. 
Thus, you want to proc Inspire as much as possible to ensure that you are providing the maximum amount of healing you can for the team. While I may not be the most talented Brig in the world, I know somebody that is. I know a lot of you have been asking for Brigitta, Lucio, and Mercy Guides, so I wanted to take the time now to introduce you to a good friend of mine, Holy Shift Kid. He has created guides similar to mine for all of the main support heroes, and I highly recommend checking them out if you are a player looking to improve on these characters. The links can be found on screen, as well as in the description. With that all out of the way, let's consider how this concept, that damage is healing, affects Lucio. Lucio may seem like a heal and speed bot on the surface, but there are a lot more options to choose from that many players fail to realize. If your team is struggling with taking down a Widow, sometimes taking matters into your own hands as Lucio and flanking to pick the Widow consistently is the right call. However, don't become overzealous. Flanking a Kree or an Ash can be incredibly dangerous if they have their stun or coach gun. While the idea is there, you must always proceed with caution. However, if you can consistently find opportunities to find picks with Lucio when your team isn't up to snuff, you can be the key to victory for your team. While speed boost doesn't necessarily provide damage to compensate for the lack of healing, it does provide mobility to get teammates out of tough positions. Much like Baptiste, there will be situations that you won't be able to heal your teammates out of a pinch, but you can speed them away from the danger they face. So, just like Bap, don't fall into the habit of heal botting on Lucio. Speaking of heal botting, let's see how it can be avoided with Mercy. As Mercy, it can be easy to fall into the trap of holding heal on targets until their health is completely refilled. While there are situations where this is optimal, there are just as many situations where this is suboptimal. Mercy is played into compositions that rely heavily on spamming off angles. Thus, she is played oftentimes with a Zen, Ana, and sometimes Baptiste. Because of this, it is important to understand the win condition of the composition you are playing on. Because she is strong within these compositions, it is essential that she utilizes her damage boost ability as much as possible to contribute to the team's goal, damage, especially against brawl compositions. If your spam composition can destroy the incoming brawl before they even touch the team, is it really that big of a deal if your Sigma is missing 50 health? No. Because you are preventing loads of damage by killing it first, you are embodying the idea that damage is healing on Mercy. But Moira is another character that might seem hard to understand when reviewing this broad concept. However, in practice, you will find that damage is very practical. In order to continuously heal, Moira must do damage, but this is just the surface. An often overlooked technique on Moira is that she has the ability to apply a lingering healing effect on teammates, hit with her spray. This gives you much more flexibility within teamfights where you can deal damage while also refilling your biotic energy using her right click. The extra damage Moira can provide while performing this technique is what differentiates a good Moira from a great Moira. Moving on, while healing orbs are most commonly used in many situations, in the rare occasion where you throw a damage orb, the value of support that damage provides is crazy. This also applies to Coalescence. Utilizing Coalescence against a Pharah Mercy combo is sometimes viable to take matters into your own hands and focus the flying duo down if they ever become overzealous in their engagement. While this is a specific example that directly defines the idea that damage is healing, the broader point I am trying to make is that Coalescence is extremely useful at punishing targets that don't respect the damage power the ultimate provides. All of these ideas add up making the understanding of fundamentals that damage is healing extremely crucial to the success on the character of Moira. Contrary to Brigitte and Mercy, Zenyatta's kit is quite literally the embodiment of the concept that damage is healing. While the Orb of Harmony provides a small amount of healing, Zenyatta makes up for that in his incredible damage potential. The fact that it isn't even a question when Zenyatta lights up the kill feed should be enough explanation. However, to understand why Zenyatta exemplifies this concept so well, let's dive into compositions that Zen shined brightly in in the past. If you are an OG, you probably remember what was meta in Season 5. Zen Lucio dive compositions were incredibly popular. While these compositions would function incredibly differently with the current characters that have been implemented to the game, the compositions still thrived off of the concept that damage is healing. Why run an Ana for healing if they are just going to kill you before you can heal? Who needs heals when you can just kill them first? 
Thus, by utilizing the incredible speed at the time provided by Lucio and the menacing damage from the entire team amplified by Discord, damage far outweighs the luxury of healing, especially with the cast of characters that were available at the time. Nowadays, it is much more common to see compositions with Zen along with a Mercy or a Brig. Zen Mercy compositions tend to be played alongside Wrecking Ball and Sigmas and rely heavily upon creating multiple threats from various angles. However, to take these angles effectively, high damage is required. While DPS can get the job done, it is much easier with the power of Discord and damage boost on the battlefield, which is what made these compositions so powerful in the past. Zen Brig dive compositions are still potent today. What Zenyatta lacks in self-sustain and healing, Brig backs up with powerful Inspire healing and incredible CC and stun potential. With Brigitta's implementation, it gave the option for teams to become much more aggressive with their engagements now that many more flankers exist in the game in the form of Sombra and Echo, but I digress. Thus, Zenyatta has revolutionized what it means to be a support in not only the game of Overwatch, but in all games in general. While the idea of damage is healing is found in many relevant compositions, let's see how it all fits together when playing in ladder where compositions can be rather odd sometimes. Since I am in the midst of my Ana Unranked to GM series, a common healer composition I have found is Ana and Baptiste paired together. This is not because they work well together, but just because in ladder you will find crazy compositions that will force you to adapt to win the game. In this composition, it is important for you to realize that Baptiste will be providing the bulk of the healing. This is an indicator for you as the Ana player to be even more aggressive with your grenades and look for more damage. This is just one of many unconventional compositions that you may find in ladder, but hopefully with this basic idea, you can transfer it throughout your games to have a better plan and understanding of how you should play as a whole. Before I conclude the video, I would like to emphasize that this concept is quite advanced. It is much more important to make sure you are getting your basic value before all else. Tunnel visioning on damage as a support is just as bad as tunnel visioning on healing, and I've seen both of these extremely hindering habits in VOD reviews. Being able to read and recognize situations on the battlefield where you could be healing and vice versa is an important skill to master when applying this concept. And with that said, we have finished the video for today. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments down below as this is a very important concept for you to grasp as soon as possible. Thank you so much for watching, but until next time, I've got a peace out and paz out. I'll see you in the next one.